this is Dr. Webb here. In this video today, I'm gonna to talk about what pre-med students and also medical students can do to have a productive summer. What should you be doing? I get a lot of questions about what should I do this summer? Uh, how should I spend my summer? I'm gonna tell you guys what I think you should be doing coming up, stay tuned. All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about something, some things that pre-med students as well as medical students can do in, the, in your summertime. Um, I don't even know what a summer break is. It's been so long since I had a summer break. Once you start working as a physician, uh, you don't get summers anymore. I miss them. I'm jealous of you guys. Uh, so number one, I, I think the most important is to have fun. Even though you want to work, you want to do something productive, uh, you want to have, make sure you have fun because when school comes around, uh, that kind of eliminates a lot of things that you can you have time to do. So definitely have fun. Travel, go on a mission trip, uh, hang out with your friends, do some partying, whatever it is that you wanna do to have fun, whatever you call fun, just make sure that you do it. Um, because even though you may think that uh, you're going on a trip to Europe or Brazil, Puerto Rico, Colombia or something like that, uh, you, you don't think that will look good on your application. I do think it will look good on your application because you can say, hey, I went to, I traveled. Uh, I booked packed across Columbia during my summer, summer, my, summer um, my summer summer break. And that actually looks good because it shows uh, something interesting about you, something that sets you apart from everyone else. Uh, the next thing that you can do is do research. Uh, research is uh, very important when applying to medical schools. Some schools require them, some schools don't. Uh, residency program, some require, some don't. Research allows you to be more competitive. So if your grades are not as good, your GPA is not as good, that research may bring you to that next level. Um, a lot of people don't know is the research that you do in college can be used for your residency application, which I didn't know as well. So if you do research in college, you can use that on your residency application. And there are lots of different research positions out there. The, the key is to just find them. You have to do a really good Google search. You can e email some professors or researchers at your school and get into a research position, hopefully a paid one, so you can uh, make money. And uh, hopefully you can uh, get into a project that is something that's interesting to you. So research is really good if you can uh, get involved. And I'll try to put a link to some uh, potential programs in the uh, box below. The next thing you can do is volunteer. Uh, volunteering is actually, it's some schools actually require that. They require that you have some volunteer hours. So that can be ha ha Habitat for Humanity, that's what I did. Fisher House is, is what I did. Uh, you can go to the uh, shelter. You can hand out food to the homeless. Whatever it is that you're passionate about. Don't just do a volunteer work so that it looks good on paper. Find something that, that interests you and that you're passionate about because when, it's, when it comes time to explain that during your interviews, it will come off more genuine if you can passionately say, this is why I did Habitat for Humanity. This is why I did Boys and Girls Club of America. So find something that you're passionate about and just do it. Don't let it compromise or take up all of your summer break. You know, just do a couple hours here, a couple hours there. There's really no required number of hours that you need. Uh, I get that question a lot. You just have to have some. The next thing is clinical experience. Whether this is volunteering at the hospital, whether this is shadowing a doctor, whether this is um, doing medical dictation, going to a nursing home, any type of clinical experience is good. And there's really no one clinical experience that's better than the other. I get that question a lot too. Like, uh, should I do EMT or should I, volunteer at the hospital or a shadow a doctor. It really doesn't matter. Just get some clinical experience. There's really no number of set number of hours that you need. Um, find a position that works with your schedule and do it. And hopefully a clinical position sometimes can lead to a research position because when you're at the hospital, you can make connections. You can go up to the doctors and say, hey, do you have any research projects that you need help on um, as, you, as you are shadowing them? So that, that's another way to get your foot in the door. Uh, a lot of students ask me, how can I find someone to shadow? I think the best way to do it is basically 
uh, contact uh, doctors. You can Google local doctors in your area, and a lot of them have their email addresses. Or call their office and say, hey, I'm a college student. I'm interested in medicine. Would you mind if I, this doctor, blah, 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 is, she, is he interested in having a student for the summer? I'm, I'm here for the summer. So the key to that is to contact multiple places because I, sometimes doctors are really busy and they may not get back with you. So if that one doctor doesn't get back with you, you don't stop there. Keep going. Call five, six, ten offices. Just spend a Saturday morning and uh, call those offices. Keep it really organized. This is when I called. This is who I spoke to. They said yes. They told me to come by the office and bring in my CV or blah, blah, blah. And go, and go about it that way. So, most important is that your summers are spent having fun. This is a time that um, is very limited. You won't have summers off again for the rest of your life unless you choose to do that once you start working as a physician in residency. So most importantly is have fun. Try to do things that will make you stand out and interesting. When I went skydiving, the people at my interviews for medical school and also residency, that's all they wanted to talk about. They said, oh, you went skydiving, how was that? Tell me about that. So if you do things during your summer, go scuba diving or bungee jumping, which I would probably never do, that's just crazy. Um, find something that interests you and also something that's really interesting that would catch the eyes of the interviewer so next thing is volunteer and also clinical hours if you just uh, happen to have not taken the MCAT yet you can also do some reading critical uh, the critical reasoning section of the MCAT is a really challenging uh, section for a lot of people so you know read different like New York Times the uh, Observer or different newspapers the Encore are different things that you can do to help your critical uh, reasoning skills. So just keep up on your reading. Read a lot of books. Um, I'll try to put some book recommendations for you guys in the link below also, in the, in the comment section below. But this is, this is what I think you guys should be doing for your summers. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys are out for the summer, whether you are a pre-med student, whether you're a medical student, comment in the box below and let me know what you're doing. Hopefully it's something fun. In my medical school, we, we got off summers between our first year and second year. One summer I took off and just had fun and traveled. The next summer I worked for an organization called the National Youth Leadership Forum. And basically you go to different locations and you teach high school students who are uh, interested in medicine. So uh, I spent a summer doing that in Los Angeles, California. And I'll try to put a link to that as well in the comment in the uh, description below. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss these videos. We'll see you next time.